Hello friends, welcome to Chairside. Today we have so many patients who come up to us requesting a shade change for their teeth in a very short span of time. We know that in-office bleaching is a very effective way of accomplishing this. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the simple but very very important steps that we need to follow for in-office bleaching. Though I'll be using the Opalescence Boost from Ultradent for this demonstration, the basic procedure remains the same with other in-office bleaching materials as well. Opalescence Boost is a 40% hydrogen peroxide and it is a chemically activated bleach and hence you will see that I am not using any kind of bleaching light for this process. So this is the case which I am going to demonstrate the bleaching process on and you can see that I have draped the patient already. I have also completed a scaling in the previous appointment and now I will be polishing the patient's teeth before the bleach is applied. The first step in the bleaching process is to get a rough idea of the patient's shade before the procedure. This will help us evaluate the effectiveness of the bleaching process. In this case I can see that the pre-op shade is around 83. I will apply some Vaseline onto the lips before I start the process. The teeth are then rinsed and dried followed by the application of the gingival dam. The gingival dam or the barrier as we call it prevents the bleach from contacting the gums. I therefore like to be very generous in applying the dam. We apply a continuous layer of the gingival barrier over the tissues slightly overlapping the tooth cervically and also cover the interdental papilla. It is important to evaluate that there are no gaps at this stage. Following this, the dam is light cured. We are now ready to apply the bleach. Because it is chemically activated, we need to start mixing it just prior to the application. So this is how the two plungers get attached to one another. We push the clear plunger to rupture the membrane inside and then we push the red plunger to transfer its contents into the clear syringe. Doing this will combine the bleach with the activator. We continue pushing on the two plungers alternatively to ensure proper mixing. This process should be repeated to a total of around 25 to 30 times. The gel should be contained in the red syringe before it is separated from the clear syringe. We can then attach the delivery tip onto the red syringe and verify even flow without any resistance on a piece of gauze. The gel is then applied to the label surfaces of the teeth in layers approximately 1 mm thick. The gel must remain on the teeth for at least 15 to 20 minutes before repeating the application. We also intermittently closely monitor the patient to ensure that there is no bleach contacting the soft tissues. After around 15 to 20 minutes, we remove the bleach with the suction only. It's better not to use water at this stage to prevent the splattering of the bleach. The bleaching agent is a highly caustic solution and it may lead to severe soft tissue burns. It is therefore also very important to have a good high wax suction for this procedure. In this case, I am going to repeat the application of the bleach one more time but care should be taken that not more than three applications at a single sitting should be applied. After around 15 minutes again, we suction the bleach and then use the water spray to rinse the teeth and use a high wax suction simultaneously. Once we have achieved the desired result, we take an instrument to take off the gingival barrier. It's usually very easy to remove and it may come out in one or more pieces. In case I see any kind of gingival burns, I can apply some vitamin E gel to promote healing. We can now polish the teeth before winding up and you can see that the teeth have become much brighter. In fact, we can see that after the bleaching procedure, the teeth have become an A2 shade. I want to thank you all for watching this video on behalf of everyone here at Chairside. 
Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you next week.